It's never a dull moment with this guy. Okay, okay. No, you're supposed to stay down there. You, are you training today? Yes. Where are you hitting? Overhead and floor press. Okay. Sleeves? So, Bringer's been using the regular strength sleeves. What do you think about them? It's good. Especially when I have like some tendonitis or I need to overload, it's good for the principle that I can still do it, but I'm not getting like a ridiculous, like equipped overload. Especially when you have like a long prep cycle, to like all the pack, the elbow, the knees will beat up. You're not hurt, you just need to bandage it up for the day. Yeah. Instead of missing a training cycle, you can do that and keep going. Let's get it. What's up, guys? It's been a while. I'm here with my boy O'Bringer. What's up, everybody? We haven't dropped a video in about two and a half months. We took a break. Rebounding basically back from an injury that I had over the past three months, um, slowly increasing. We're already in the 600s. Next phase is 700s. I'm excited. I feel great. I'm lighter than I, I've ever been, down to 433. Sorry, I got, I got um, Sour Patch Kids in my mouth. Anabolic, totally anabolic. Y'all, y'all want to know how I got to where I'm at today? It's because of all sour patch. All you gotta anabolic. do is be 400 pounds and eat sour patch kids. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the formula. That's and train it. a little bit. No kidding. You follow a program. Anyway, don't forget all the programs you need are on a regularstrength.com. Whatever program you need, eight week, twelve week, six week hypertrophy program. I got whatever you need to make sure to ensure that you are the strongest individual that you possibly can be. At irregularstrength.com, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. We're back, baby. Let's go. Finally in my element. Uh, I've been training with O'Bringer. We've been training on and off for the past year, but really more so over the past two months. He just brings energy to the table. And that's what I was gonna say. Something different about this training block is, man, I'm just surrounding myself with people as far as training wise that are gonna push me to get to that level. That's not gonna accept any crap. That's not gonna uh, uh, hold back or sugarcoat anything. And that's a big problem in the fitness industry today is people give you a pat on the back even if you fell a lift or people give you a pat on the back uh, even if uh, they see you giving 70%. As you'll see, as we go on, you'll see a bringer what he brings to the table. And this is why I'm, I'm just grateful to train with him. He brings that energy that I've been missing. Of course, when I go up and train with TD at East Race Muscle and things like that, yes, yeah, live, but here, home, and basically an hour and a half from home, you can't conjure up or manifest this type of energy without having someone to do it, right? For example, what kept Michael Jordan going on to get the sixth ring? or Tom Brady to get his last ring. Like, what pushes a person? Because the daily grind, and even when you're winning, like, you can't even enjoy it even when you're winning because as soon as you win, you're on to the next. I've won four titles already, right? So, and we're on the verge of trying to break this 800 pound bench press. Like, how do I keep pushing myself? And I've been trying to figure this out over the past eight months. And one key part to that is making sure that I surround myself with people who aren't gonna co-sign for my bull crap, right? So, so I'm bitch only, so that makes it, it makes it, it's a little easier. How's it for full power? What are you doing differently since you're full power? Um, yeah, we talked about, I mean, Julius is like, hey man, I live 90 minutes away and we've always, we've always trained super well together. Yeah. And now we have the opportunity where we can train at least twice a week if we want to. Yeah. And you know, coming from my background of being at Lexington in Columbus, I was, you know, eat as much as I can, like low reps heavy all the time. And me and Julius talked about injuries and injury prevention. And now we went, both went through a four to six week block where eights and tens and twelves and air maps so now where i'm coming into where i can kind of switch from like a speed bench day or speed twat day but i still have to have you on an upper body like overhead and then i deal yeah. with that day but like with us going back and forth about the whole like yes man someone's always telling you yes you're the best with me and julius we've just done a great job of like bringing reality to each other hey yeah you can be the best and you can separate yourself but this is what we have to do to get there and we've done a really good job of like laying the ground rules like hey this is a standard it needs to change every day and always go up Absolutely. So if you're surrounding yourself with people who are just yes men, I'm telling you, it's toxic. That goes in all areas of life, not just the gym, but that's outside of the gym in the, in the workforce or, or just your nightlife. If you're surrounding yourself with people who aren't trying to push you to elevate, for example, 
I've gotten four calls over the past 24 hours from Tyler making sure that, hey, look, you're on the road. Or, hey, look, you're coming. Hey, look, you need to get your mind right. That's just one element. On top of that, I got my coach and I got a couple other people, but you have to have these role players in your life to assure that you're, that you're performing optimal. And when you're not performing optimal, they're going to call you out on it. So let's go. Maybe. Takeaway, he just did. 16. Times how many reps he just did? Seven. Seven. Times 0 0.0333 gives you an equation number plus the number of weight you just benched. So right now, Julius is about a 750. 750 right now. Give or take with what's going on. Yeah. So that's the uh, little formula to be able to guesstimate like what my one rep max is. So all you guys that want to max out of the gym and go heavy all the time, you can still go heavy through an equation to where like you're pushing yourself through a PR rep set rather than just a PR one and always getting hurt. You can bang out some fours, some fives, some eights, some tens, and still chase the number that gets you better. No, it makes perfect sense because most people, they don't go by rep PRs. They go by one, one rep, rep PRs. Yeah. Old school people like Ed Cohn, Bill Kazmaier, people that have been in powerlifting for 30 plus years, they'll tell you that they should have never done that. They should have just backed off done multiple sets, multiple reps, and you can still incorporate the equation to where you can kind of guesstimate what your one rep max is. You shouldn't fail heavy sets in the gym. Yeah. You can have grinders, you can have days where it's difficult, but you should never set yourself up for a fail during yeah. prep. One that men's be told is with you. Not saying you won't, but you, you should. You should not be, oh, I think I can, if you go, I think I can do this, like, damn, why do you only think? You're in preparation. Preparation is a thought out process that you're yeah. trying to become better at. Today was supposed to be 600 for six. We did 610, so not too much above what we're supposed to be doing, but just enough, and I still achieved the sets and reps that I was supposed to get. So just enough to stimulate the muscle. And the big thing about it is, too, is I've been off for two weeks. When was the last time I've been down two weeks ago? This, this shoulder was flaring up a little bit. Today, we, we're back. So 600, we'll say we're 75%, 75% today, and we came and, and got the recommended reps and sets. Well, as of right now, I got one more set, so. Hey, we can turn it on. You guys are safe. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to turn it on. We have to turn it on. It's time to get better. No more yes men. I'm going to throw on the regular strength sleeves right now. They'll be available for pre-order in the next couple months. So be on the lookout for those. Great tool to have to put into your protocol. Great. Great for overloading. Great for uh, if you're experiencing elbow tendonitis and you just can't kick it and you feel like you can't work out with the elbow tendonitis, this sleeve is going to help. So be on the lookout for that. talking a little bit about the cues as far as like the simple things whenever you're setting up for a bench there's certain elements that you need to keep in mind the first one is your foot placement so many times have I missed lifts because my foot placement wasn't where it should have been because laying down you can't really see where your feet are let's take a look down here when you're setting up your feet need to be 
even, right? A lot of times when I set up and I can't see because I'm rushing the process and I'm thinking about everything else, sometimes my foot placement, one is staggered back further than the other. So when you're utilizing leg drive and you're trying to drive, whichever side your foot is staggered, it's gonna kind of twist your body. Yeah. Therefore, when you twist your body, it means already you're starting out uneven on your setup or on your first rep. So lately, one thing we've been doing is making sure that my feet, one, are behind my knees, your feet need to be behind your knees, and two, they need to be even with one another. So that ensures that everything goes smoothly, and when you activate your leg drive, you're not twisting, you're not twerking. twerking your, yeah. Really, we want to be more in a power position where we're evenly pushing back onto the lats and the traps. Yeah, that makes and then sense. We, and then when we start squeezing, if we're off-centered, that one peg or shoulder is going to take more load, trust Absolutely. me. Absolutely. It will take more than it should. So, and do you think, what do you think the common factor of yours was? Was it because you was... Well, yeah, let's talk about feet placement. I got my leg broke, I shattered my tibia fibula, so I had no, I wasn't able to press, and I still kept benching. So I would have one foot in a boot, and one foot tucked, which would be way more dramatic than yours. But what happened is I had no leg drive, and after so many reps, this got wore out and it exploded yeah. off. So eventually what happens is, as that muscle gets weakened, the muscle starts to fray, just like a rope. And eventually when a muscle frays, what happens? It pops or it breaks. So you have to keep in mind the smallest things just as far even, so foot placement and making sure not only your foot placement is right, that your feet are even, okay? That is a pro tip for you guys. That's how we get better. Just flirting with the guys. Just flirting with them. Fall in love with the weights. Let's go. I need some presses. Let's go. Give me some presses, too. Let's go. Get up. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Oh, you got these things at 80s. You feel? Yes. Go. Let's get cheap. We're tanking. Let's go. Last five. Here we go. One. Two, three, I'm satisfied with the performance today. Um, grateful for the change of scenery. Uh, I feel like it's really transferring over so as far as like my performance. We're looking to give another push for 800 in the next three months. I don't know any dates or times. I'm just waiting for my body to tell me it's ready. And right now we're gearing up for it. So if you're trying to get your bench as strong as possible, if you're tired of having puberty bench, Go to regularstrength.com and order my eight week bench program or the 12 week bench program. Or if you're just like, hey, look, I just need some routine. I got a six week muscle building program that helps you get jerked. Again, shout out to Ghost Strong, shout out to Hustle Butter, um, MHP, MHP Strong, all my supplements. And guys, don't forget, be a regular. Let's go.